Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to start showing you games from the third Croatian league. Uh, this is a league that's played every Sunday or every second Sunday. It has 13 rounds. This was round three. Now I haven't played rounds one and two because I was playing tournaments and I haven't played all rounds. It's played on six boards. Uh, I'm usually board two. Uh, board one, two or three, depending on how, how strong our team is. Uh, and in round three, I faced a Fide Master, who is actually my friend, and, and he's a great person. Uh, very strong, much stronger than his rating, obviously. And I've been preparing for him. And I knew that he plays the Queen's Gambit almost exclusively, uh, and plays the Moscow or the Anti-Moscow against the Semislavs. So I had a lot to prepare. Uh, in this position, uh, after we reach the semislav, so he, he plays bishop to g5. And against this, I always play pawn to h6, uh, going either into the Moscow or the anti-Moscow. Now, if he plays bishop h4, the, the fun begins. I take dc4, take a pawn, and we get this mad, mad position after e4, g5, bishop to g3, and b5, where black has a pawn. But white has more than enough for the pawn. Uh, and believe me, practically speaking, this is almost impossible to play for black unless you know all the theory. So you, you can lose in the next five moves. Uh, fortunately for me, he, he took an f6, uh, which is easier to play against. Uh, this is obviously no advantage to white after queen takes because... The only problem in black's position is the bishop on c8, but there's a very clear plan of developing this bishop. If you play the semislav, you should be familiar with this, but I'm going to explain it in just a few seconds. So what you want to do, if allowed, uh, but you're not going to be allowed to play e5, so the other option is always to play c5 to liberate this bishop. So the plan is to eventually take on c4, play b6, bishop to b7 and c5. And then you will have two great bishops, because the other one usually gets to g7. Play g6, bishop to g7. Now here the main move is pawn to e3. Uh, he played queen to b3, which I was actually expecting. Uh, he's played it before. And I played a slightly strange move. Uh, the fourth most common, but very tricky. Queen to e7. And the idea of queen to e7 is twofold. Firstly, you, you want to make this bishop good, so your, your queen really doesn't belong on f6. Secondly, you are preventing the immediate e4 in theory, because if e4 is played, you can now take, knight takes, and you have queen before check, which is very annoying. Uh, with queens of the board, the two bishops should be way more powerful uh, for black, because you get to control the entire board. The knights really don't have too many squares. And he has faced this move before uh, against Grandmaster Palats, uh, a Croatian Grandmaster 2500, and they got a sort of equal position in which the Grandmaster outplayed him. So I sort of wanted to duplicate that. But basically I've been preparing for this game for a long time. Now, now let me give you a brief context. The day before the game, one of my best friends was getting married, and it was in another city about 100 kilometers away from where I live. And the games in the Croatian Third League are played at 10 a.m. in the morning, so going to a wedding the day before is not too fun. Now, since he is one of my best friends, I told him, look, I'm, I'm going to go to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, not later, uh, because I have to sleep and get to the game. I don't drive, I don't have a car, uh, so I took a cab actually because it was Sunday morning to the place where the league was played, which was very expensive. Uh, and I, I had no other way to get there. There are no buses before noon, no trains uh, before I think two o'clock in the afternoon. And all of my friends were drunk and sleeping, so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't ask them to drive me. I, I don't drink, so I, I wasn't hungover. But when I woke up, I had some sort of a flu and I felt like I just didn't feel like playing. Now, we have substitutes in our team, but it was too late to, to ask for one at that point. So I was feeling bad. Okay. And yeah, I mean, having a fever and stuff is not good. That's not an excuse. I mean, I'm not trying to excuse myself. I'm just giving you 
the brief context for the game. Okay, he played e3. Uh, I went g6, which is fine. Bishop d3, bishop g7, both sides castle, rook f1. Now we get to my plan. I want to go dc4, b6, bishop b7, c5. So dc4, bishop c4, b6. He played rook a d1, I played bishop to b7. And here he played e4, which is actually a mistake. And in this position, black should already be slightly better. Firstly, the two bishops. Secondly, I can play c5. There's no way to prevent it. Thirdly, I had a very, very nice move here, which I didn't even consider. And that's uh, bad because I've been playing these positions for a long time. And this is a pattern I should have known and should have seen instantly. And that's to simply play b5. The idea is you, you force the bishop back, so there's no pressure on the diagonal. And once the bishop moves either to d3 or to f1, you go e6. And this is a tremendous position for me. Why? Because I'm going to play c5, break the center. Uh, d5 is simply not possible here. Uh, yeah, great position. For example, e5, I just go c5. Instead of that, I played a strange move. I played knight a6, uh, which I don't think is bad because it supports c5, uh, sort of prevents d5 because I get to play knight c5 and develops a piece. Uh, I could have played knight to d7 as well uh, instead of knight a6, but I don't want my knight hanging on d7 in some positions. Okay, d5 played. I have to take the cd, ed, and knight c5. Attacking the queen, defending on e6. My opponent played queen c2 and I played queen f6, which is a very tricky move. Uh, it's very easy to go wrong here. Uh, if you go knight e4, for example, then knight e4, queen e4, and simply queen takes b2. Or if knight e4, rook e4, then this again, I can take on b2, I can take here, trade pieces off, for example like this. And this should be winning for black. It should be easily winning. My knight is obviously much better. My bishop is much better than the knight, obviously. After queen f6, if he goes d6, that's also bad. Uh, I go knight e6. And after bishop e6, I go bishop f3. And if he tries bishop f7, then simply rook f7, gf3, queen f3. Again, a tremendous position for me. If after queen f6, he goes knight e5, then I simply go queen g5. Double pressure on the knight, pressure on e6, pressure on g2. Uh, a nice position. So the only move is knight to d4, which I'd been expecting. And originally I wanted to play uh, I wanted to play queen to f4 here. But then I saw it doesn't work. Well, queen f4 attacks the knight, fine. Uh, seems like a tricky move to play. And if he goes knight f3, I can just take the bishop on c4. If he goes knight c2 e2, I can just go queen h4. And again, a lot of pressure in the position. If, uh, yeah, but, but there's a refutation. Uh, after queen f6 and knight e4 and queen f4, he can simply win uh, with d6, which I saw before playing queen f4, luckily. Well, the point is, if, if you take the knight now, uh, bishop takes d4, then e7 is crushing, exploiting the pin and attacking g6. So rook f8 sacks the, uh, sacks the rook to, to weaken g7. Queen takes, and now queen to g6. And if queen to g7, then simply bishop f7. And I can resign. That's, that's it. So queen f4 would have been a very bad move. So instead... Uh, I could have played normal moves like rook f8 or rook ad8, but I didn't really want to allow knight c6. If I go rook ad8, then knight c6 I can take it, takes, and, and should still be equal. But instead I, I, took on, I took on d5, which seemed simplest. Bishop d5. Now, <clears throat> we reached the position in which I made such a bad move. Uh, which I understood it was bad the second I played it. Uh, everybody who's seen this game told me that I'm an idiot for playing this move, and I completely agree. Uh, it makes no sense, and I, I mean, it's very hard to explain. So what should I do here? This position is perfectly equal. If anything, black is slightly better. Uh, but I should go rook f8. 
or rook a d8. Well, let's say rook f8. What can he do? He can trade, for example, takes, takes on b7, fine. If he goes knight d5, then I can take on d4, so that doesn't work. He is hanging mate. This is just a good position. My knight is coming back to c5. Instead, I did something unbelievable. I took on d5. Now, why is this such a bad move? Uh, here's my explanation for it. I didn't want my knight on b7, which makes no sense. I want my knight on b7 because I don't want to run into b4. So he probably wouldn't take on b7. It's bad but because it's giving him several tempi. My queen has no good squares. Uh, where can I put my queen? So I have to go queen g5. And now more tempi. Knight to f3. Queen has no squares. Queen to h5. And now knight e7 check. And as I said, I really couldn't think or calculate during the game. I had a huge fever and I was feeling like hell. And here I just lost the game in one move. I mean, I need to play king h7, obviously, knight g6 is hanging. Uh, uh, if, if I go knight e6 and I have to go knight e6, so yeah, I need to go king h7. I went king h8, which is just absurd. This is a blunder hopefully I would never make. In, in under normal conditions so b4 if i go knight b7 then he can go rook d7 and if i go knight e6 he plays rook e6 and i can resign f6 knight g6 king g8 knight f8 rook f8 queen e4 e5 rook d7 a5 b5 and here i actually had a chance to draw uh, he he did not see the next move. I didn't see it either. But there was an almost easy draw here with queen to f5. After queen f5, he doesn't have a good way to decline the trade because I'm threatening mate. So he has to take, has to defend the rook. Um, basically has to defend the rook, has to defend the queen, has to defend the back rank. There is no way to defend the queen, so you have to move the queen. If you move it somewhere here to defend the rook, well, for example, here you hang mate, here I can trade queens again. So takes, takes, and now I'm going to play e4, take on b5. So rook d8, king f7, rook d2, e4, knight e4. Don't take on, on, on b5 straight away because knight uh, d6, so king e7 first, rook d2 and rook b5, and this is just a draw. I mean, he's a pawn up, but it's just a draw. Instead, I played queen e8, uh, attacking the pawn. I, I saw that I couldn't take on b5. If I take on b5, then he plays queen g6 and I resign, because there's no way to defend mate. I can give up my queen and stuff. But I thought, okay, queen e8 threatens something, uh, threatens the rook. Rook b7, queen e6, just nothing. a4, queen d6. I cannot explain these moves. I wanted to threaten mate, just g3. And here, with my next move, I designed. I played rook c8, and obviously rook g7, king g7, queen g4, picks up the rook on c8. This is just a disgraceful, disgraceful game. And I mean, it's a bad game. I played poorly. Uh, bishop takes d5 is probably the worst move I made uh, ever. It's a strategic idiocy which is just inexplicable. The good news is that from now I'm going to be showing you some better games. The next game is my favorite game ever. My favorite game that I've played so far since I started playing chess. It's coming up tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you got something from this. Sorry about the poor quality of the game, but I'm showing my wins and my losses. Stay tuned for more chess. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.